So I suppose there's a spiritual lesson here, which is I am at a, <laughs> a Y in the trail. A fork in the road. And while it is shockingly beautiful out here, I need to get home before it gets dark. And I don't actually know where this trail leads from here. So, that's a hard one to turn back on. But here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna leave the camera rolling the whole time back. Because this is just beautiful. Maybe some of the peace that exists out here on this trail will translate to a video. <sighs> Seems impossible, but it's worth a try. <sighs> All right. I suppose we can consider this a 45 minute long silent walking meditation. That's what we'll call it on YouTube following our own tracks back to the road. Maybe it won't be that silent. This place reminds me of a cathedral. sense of hush and deep peace but also a deep and silent life in history I said on Friday that this is a special landscape my soul, these north woods. So as we walk for this next bit, what is the landscape of your soul?
one of the really magical things about the woods after a snow is how the snow damps down all the sound that's normally out here it also changes it all the echoes are gone so the sound is much more immediate so it is at once very still but also very loud out here after it snows I'm aware of the sound of my boots on the ground in a way that I'm not in the summer or after a rain so for the next few minutes in your life what is the sound of stillness nearly face planting that was surprisingly quiet <sighs> Ow. <laughs> sometimes we get so caught up in a peaceful moment <laughs> that we forget that the ground despite being peaceful <sighs> still can be a little treacherous measure of this place's cathedral like nature and you just didn't hear a string of expletives on the recording back to the logging trail the thing about a lot of these forests is that they're not actually old growth forests Upstate New York was logged bare a century or century and a half ago. And so just about everything up here either has old logging roads or active logging roads on it. It's a question of resource management here. Is how do we think of these woods? a resource 
but one that we continually renew and reinvigorate and as we use them to gather wood and paper and the necessities of modern life. We passed the logging site as we came in. I don't know if that'll be on the video, but it's still very much going on out here. One of the things that I'm very aware of out here in the winter, about 20 degrees out right now, is how much equipping oneself for time in this environment changes the experience. Just to be out here in street clothes, this is a quick way to frostbite and real danger. To be out here in boots that you're pretty confident in. And clothes that aren't cotton that keep warmth even when they're wet. It turns this place from being dangerous to being peaceful. So as long as we're reflecting how do you equip yourself landscapes of your life to make them less dangerous and more a source of peace and joy. When I started this hike way back on Monday, or about an hour and a half ago for me, it's 
talked about how the snow made it hard to see the trail and I would go slower because I was looking for these white blazes on trees and that they were hidden in all the white of the snow. The other truth of that is that I seem to be the first person on this trail since the snowfall and so the only way to see the trail was by the blazes. On the way back I'm going a lot faster because I'm following the tracks that I laid in the snow going the other way. Trails are a lot easier when we can see them. Even when they're trails that we've left ourselves. So, for the next few minutes here, what is the trail that you're following that's been left for you? Maybe somebody else blazed it for you. Maybe you're following a trail you've already laid down. But either way, what's giving you direction these days? Now we're coming to the check-in box. We wrote down where we were. So now, on the way out, check ourselves out of the trail. time. Ball points don't do well when <laughs> he gets this gold. Right. We do this so if anything happens have a record of where we last were. Some people know to search for us. No matter who you are, that is a sign out here that whoever you are, however silent the woods, you're never wholly alone. We walk these last couple minutes back to the car. Who's your check-in box? Who knows where you are? Who checks in? It's 
make sure that you're safe. If you haven't recently, give them a call. Send them an email. there. So as we come to the top of this rise, we are nearly at the trailhead. So our time walking this path is coming to an end. So the last meditation, 
on this walk. And I really hope that the camera has caught this. <laughs> for those of you who have watched for the last half hour or so, the last meditation is this. This was work for me. <laughs> I set myself the task nine months ago of recording weekly updates. I have done that relatively faithfully for nine months. But the thing that's become really important nine months in, in this one task, but also in the whole of my life, how do I take the things that I am obligated to do that are work and make them joyful? This last hour and a half has been the highlight of my week. And for those of you who are still watching, thank you for sharing it with me. And my last question for you as we come to the car, just up here. So what do you take in your life that's work? And make it into a source of peace and joy. Because there is peace and joy in this world. You don't always get a chance to appreciate it solely on its own terms. So how do we put ourselves in positions where we see it regardless of whether or not we're working? Thank you for this time together. Have a blessed evening or morning, and I will see you on another trail sometime. <laughs>